I am starting a new series of videos uh, that will be streamed here and then posted to YouTube that will serve as a sort of a video strategy guide uh, if you're struggling to get your arms around how to uh, play the game the initial plan is I'm going to go through each of the sieves and play the first 50 turns just to demonstrate how to lay the groundwork if you succeed in the early game you're going to have an easier time later on so I'll be doing the first 50 turns of each sieve in turn uh, breaking it into two parts, 25 turns, and then I'll start a new stream for the second leg of the 25 turns, just so the YouTube videos aren't horrendously uh, long. So, I'm going to start with, just take it alphabetically, I'm going to start with the Assyrians. Uh, they are my personal favorite sieve, uh, and I'll explain why as we get into the game. This is going to be played on the Noble, so this, these strategies will work for anything uh, Noble and below. And let's get to it. First, oh, I should also say that this video is going to be, uh, in addition to detailing Assyria, this is where I'm going to put all the Civ agnostic notes uh, so if, I would recommend watching this one first, even if you don't plan on playing Assyria, because this video will have all the little details that apply to every sit. First thing you should know is you have a brother, and he freaking hates you. Uh, and that could cause some problems for you as Assyria. But let's talk about why I absolutely love Assyria. Uh, honestly... Their, their special abilities work in tandem together beautifully. First of all, they are the only Sib in the game that uh, has both the Champions and the Hunters. I don't even recommend playing with the Patrons. The three that work the, together the best are Champions, Hunters, and Clerics. Although, it is map dependent. If you find yourself on a map where it just doesn't make sense to drop a hunter city, then by all means use the patrons. They're a good family. They just the the champions and the hunters have synergy that works with the Assyrians' abilities, and it just makes it amazing. Um, this particular city site, even if I move, doesn't really lend itself to uh, a hunter's start. Although if I move, I do get a luxury, and it doesn't look like I'm actually losing anything, so I don't see any reason not to do that. So, yeah, let's totally do that. We will move, and I'm going to found this as the champions. Now, let's take a look at the tech tree. Okay, so Assyria starts with trapping. That's how they build their slingers. Administration, which gives them the ability to build treasuries, which are awesome. Granaries, which suck. Uh, and military drill, which lets you build barracks right off the right out the gate and rally troops, which is huge huge ability uh, and we'll probably be using that well if we need to we'll be using it a bit later on in this segment the rule of thumb with tech is this certain techs unlock bonus cards you only want to have one bonus card in play at a time because when your tech selection screen comes up if you have more than one you may be, you may find yourself in a situation where you are forced to choose between them. And once the bonus cards come up and you don't select them, they're gone forever. So if you want to maximize your gains, only have one bonus card in play at a time and don't research a tech that unlocks a new one until you've gotten that card out of the queue. The only possible exception I make to that 
is animal husbandry and the free food. Food's usually pretty easy to come by, so if I have to ditch something, I ditch the free food. But where possible, take the free stuff. It helps. Your first objective, no matter what city you play, your first objective should be to get Polis because it gives you a free settler that speeds your development. And it gives you the ability to build walls and hamlets, so it's just a heavyweight early game tech. Those two things are huge. Money, this is your first fix the money problems thing that you get your hands on and walls give your cities extra hit points and make them more durable if you are attacked. So that's the first objective I always go for, which means I want, and I, and I don't have any free cards uh, in the hopper. If I look here, I don't have any free cards waiting, so I want stone cutting absolutely without fail. Uh, and that, that equation is a little bit different depending on what sieve you play because each sieve starts with different techs. So what do we know? We know where site B is. We have a, two free city sites. We know where one of them is. We don't know any details about it, and we will need to clear a path through the fog so that our settler could get there. We also have one ancient ruin, and we need to see what's see what's inside. And it looks like we're in a fairly uh, looks like a large box canyon, really, which could be either very good or very bad, depending. If we're trapped in this relatively small space with someone, that could be bad. If we're basically here with some helpless barbarian tribes, that could be really good because Assyria is just a straight-up murder machine. So I already said the family selection is the first reason that I, like, that I love this Civ. Second is all of their units, every unit they have, starts with Focus 1, which gives them a 10% chance to critical hit. Critical hits either deal double damage or just straight up eliminate whatever unit you shoot at. So you start with 10% chance of that off the bat. And then, and then, you can add generals. And like in this case, if I add a Sherbanopol, I can add another 3% chance to the critical. So right off the bat, if I put him in here, um, we have a 13% chance per attack to just either to, to critical, to either double damage or straight up murder something. That's awesome. <laughs> the other thing, though, is when you kill an enemy unit, whether it's a barbarian or whatever, you get two orders for that. So it, it's like winning more, right? You, you kill something, you get free orders, and then you can kill more somethings and get more orders. And it's just this, they're just insanely efficient killers. And then their special units can just absolutely brutalize any city they come across in very short order. I'm actually not going to put a Sherbanopol in charge of the Slinger, though. I'm going to take one of these guys with the 9% attack, and I'm going to take the guy who's younger, so he'll theoretically uh, serve me longer. So he's going to be in charge of the Slinger unit. Now, I don't have much that I can improve, um, but we are running a deficit on stone, which I can't address until I get stone cutting. So I am actually going to start mining. Now here's the first thing that I would say you need to know about Old World. In my opinion, the best and most efficient way to terraform to improve tiles is to make triangles. You want to or diamonds. You can do four here. You don't just want to have. I mean, unless you can help it, you don't just want to have a mine in isolation. It's going to produce resources. But every mine you stack adjacent to it is going to enhance that mine. So if I put a mine here, both of these mines get an extra half of an iron, 0.5. And if I put three mines, every mine in the triangle gets an extra plus one to its output. So you just increase your overall, you grow your economy faster if you if you group resources together. Now the other thing to consider is um, tiles that are adjacent to 
pastures get a bonus for farming output. So it, this would actually make a really good farm too, but the land itself isn't great for farming. So the default tile, it's only four. Once I get uh, these two pastures up. This would produce six, but that's still not great. I've got I've got better farmland I could I could get, or even if I don't in this city, uh, there's better farmland elsewhere. Other cities will be more fertile ground, and hills are just naturally better at you know producing metals. So yes, my first plan is to increase my economy's metal output, and I'm going to do that by mining these three tiles. Now I may I may not finish the triangle straight off because as soon as I get stone cutting I want to uh, improve these marble tiles. I'm currently running a deficit on stone uh, because slingers take stone as upkeep and so does my garrison which the champions family starts with. And that's actually what I'm going to do with a Sherman awful. And I'm actually going to spend my 100 training point or yeah training points to buy another order specifically so I can put the Sherbanopol in charge of the city. Now, before I do that, the settler is going to take six turns, but a Sherbanopol gives my city plus two growth. So by doing that, I shave a turn off the settler. So straight up, that was a not a terribly eventful first turn, but we got started growing the economy. We assigned a general to our slinger, so he's armed and dangerous. Uh, and we have a governor in our capital city. So there's a lot of work that we still have to do, but we have laid some pretty important groundwork already. So let's hit end turn and see what the game brings. Okay, nothing. Nothing changed that we can see. I'm going to use my slinger to go over here and get this. And so the question, do we want plus 40 culture or do we want money? Uh, let's check it out. So, our capital is producing two culture a turn. It would take us another 49 years to get to developing. We can shave 20 years off of that if we take the culture, or we can take the money. I'm going to take the culture. Now we're going to be developing in 30 or 29 years. Um... You can make a strong argument for either one. I uh, Unlocking, leveling up your culture faster means you um, can build more advanced wonders more quickly, which is awesome. So that's one compelling reason to consider it. And my only objective there was just to have a clear path so that the settler can get to the city site easily. Now I still want to snoop around here a little bit, so next turn I'll take the high ground and push the fog back so I can see what, if any, special resources this uh, city site has to offer. But then we are off to look for our second freebie city site. Based on the way the map is, I'm going to guess it's either here or up here. I'm hoping it's along the river, because that will auto-connect the city with the capital, but we'll see. We don't know. And to facilitate that, I'm going to use my slinger to start heading upriver uh, next year while the scout uh, looks around Site B and sees what he can see. So we want to know more about the terrain before we just plonk a city down there. Because certain terrain is better suited to certain uh, families. We want to make sure we make the best decision that we can uh, with regards to 
what city, or what family gets this site. Okay, this is a fun event series, believe it or not. Um, if you pay all three tributes, iron, food, gold, you will get a trading partner out of the Civ in question. So, she's pretty spread out, but she is very close to us. Um, in my experience, the Egyptians are kind of psycho. They'll just declare war on you kind of willy-nilly. Uh, so we need to be careful about that, but we also need to, we need to out-expand her. So let's, and I need to be careful because she might, she's close enough that she might steal that city site from me. Uh, I don't know. Okay, well, we have found Dick so far, and that's not great. Okay, so my brother who hates me is now also completely batshit, and that's not great. I'm going to harvest these horses. I don't often harvest resources with my starting scout. I'm more interested in uncovering tiles, breaking up the fog, finding city sites, finding barbarian camps. But money is super versatile. We're currently running a deficit. It, to me, it's worth an order to go ahead and do that. And same thing here. Uh, oh, this is actually this is going to give me culture. So that's going to speed... Uh, that's going to speed my, let's shave a little bit more time off my cultural development, so that's awesome. We're going to also scarf that if Wench doesn't get to it before I do. There he is. Oh, well, we're just going to have to buy an order take that shot. Now next turn he's going to get reinforcements so we're going to be fighting two to one battle but these are the Assyrians and these are champion slingers uh, so yeah we should be able to eat these guys for lunch we'll see right now the first thing I want to do is get on to because this is an infantry unit see so if I get onto an urban tile I increase my attack power by 25% so and he's 20 he's already gets a 25% bonus versus barbarians so he's not quite as good as two units but damn near and then you add the general on top of that and uh, yeah he's he pretty He's a pretty badass unit, so I think we're going to be able to take him. And Salt is going to give me some more culture. We're going to break the fog away from us and the Egyptians, just so I can see... Uh, we have a clear path to them. And we're still looking for Site C. I mean, it's cool that we found some barbarians, and I'm more than happy to meet up on them. But we're looking for our other free city site. Yeah. Ashurbanopal has craptastic research. Uh, ours, our research is only seven. Uh, I don't want to take anyone with a negative wisdom, because that's going to hurt it even worse. So, I am going to marry this commander. At least that won't make my research any worse than it already is. Oh, and my wife died giving birth, apparently. So, we're going to crush the city... Uh, garrison the barbarians had in play 
and now it's one on one and we're just going to devastate them with our next, next attack and they're going to nickel and dime us so not really a fair fight we're going to get the settler down here because I don't want Egypt to steal my ship and I'm going to just kind of nose around here sticking mostly to the high ground so I can uncover tiles more quickly and I am not seeing uh, my second freebie city site here so the only other place it can be is across these mountains somewhere that's inconvenient but we will take uh, take a look at it I'm immediately gonna build another settler because we're gonna have well, we've secured a site so that'll give me three cities up and running uh, Okay, I'm going to take the I'm not ready to give my heart to another because it gives me, uh, it's going to give me plus 32 gold. That's going to solve our money problems. So, yeah. It's gave me more discipline. These stats are pretty buff. Okay, so we're still five turns away from uh, having our uh, stone cutting tag now here see I can't I can't mine this tile yet because I don't have enough orders left but I can prep the site right and this is good order management hey Spidey uh, by the way your comment yesterday or day before on the, the movies we just talking about Savage Land did you guys get a chance to watch that This is this is, comes down to good orders management. I've got one order. I can cut this scrub for nothing and then clear the land. So next turn, building the mines only gonna cost one order. Yeah, I love that movie. I've I think I've watched it a couple of times and it's just creepy as shit. It's a very well made low budget movie. I was I was impressed. What I'm doing here, I, I, this is a repeat of the Assyrian first 50 turns. I want to port these videos over to uh, YouTube so they become like a video strategy guide. But I don't, I didn't feel like I went into enough detail uh, in the first attempt. So I'm just doing another one just to kind of, so if new players are struggling to get their arms wrapped around some of the game mechanics, Hopefully, this video series will uh, will help with that. All right. So, I mean, yeah, we've taken some damage, but it, these guys are toast. They never really stood a chance. The Assyrians are just badasses. All right. So we're going to found a city here, but again, this is not a great uh, hunter's city. So I think I'm just going to found it as the clerics and go ahead and found my religion. So we're Team Zoro, uh, and that gives me a religion right off the bat. Cool thing about religious cities is they have uh, minus one unhappiness right out the gate. So. They're just happier cities, which is cool. I'm going to start with a worker because nothing else happens without the worker improving tiles. Workers are the unsung heroes of the game. They will win or lose the game for you every bit as much as the quality of your army and the tactics you employ in its use. Uh, never underestimate the power of your workers. And we found Site C, and Site C sucks. 
I mean, uh, so far, unless we find some amazing shit up here next turn, Site C basically blows. Um, but it's a good city site in terms of denying Egypt opportunities to grow. So, I mean, we'll take it. We'll, even a bad city site is better than, you know, not having a city. So, we'll take it. But it's not, it doesn't look great. Um, we'll see. Could be wrong about that. There could be amazing shit waiting for us just out, just on the other side of that fog. Don't know. Alright, so, again, Assyria just dominates uh, combat with the, uh, oh shit. Okay, so one of these, I'm guessing it's this one is Egypt's city site. Oh, we have an opportunity here. How in the hell are we going to... Okay, we need to... Ugh, 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 ugh. Can I... No, it's going to take me five years to make... Well, it's only going to take me four years to make a slinger. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Damn, dude. I don't know. That is awesome. Oh, that's so tempting. Okay. The first thing I'm gonna do is just come up here and and scope it out a little bit. Oh, it's well, okay. So now we we've, we've learned something very important. We are in the northern portion of the map. Just orienting yourself geographically is, is hugely important. So now we now we have an important clue about where we are in, con in the context of everybody else. So one thing this tells me is that there's probably not a lot of competition I mean, now that I've killed the, the, the guy that was up here. There's probably not any other sieves up here that are going to, if I leave this, if I abandon this site, nobody's up here going to take it. So that's big. So I think what I'm going to do then is I'm going to park my, my scout on this site. And I'm going to reload. This is a little bit risky because if this site is left alone for too long, uh, untended, it will become a barbarian camp again. You don't want to abandon them for too long. Ten turns. We'll, we'll see a counter appear. Um, but my settlers coming out in six. I kind of feel like I need to abandon this site and plonk my uh, my slinger here and hold both of these against. As a, as a check against Egypt, if I can choke off Egyptian growth super early, they're going to be marginalized, and that gives us four, uh, five, right? Because here's the three, and I've already got two. That gives us five city sites. That's not that's not big enough for for my liking. I would prefer to have eight to twelve, but. Five's a hell of a good start. If we didn't have to do much for that, if we can manage to hold that, that is amazing. So I think what I'll do is, yeah, next turn, because he's, he's attacked this turn, so he can't do shit right now. Um, and what we'll do is I'm going to... You have a couple of very basic diplomatic tools early on, and in this case, we can try to influence... Uh, the Queen of Egypt, but that's going to cost some money, so I'm going to sell off some wood, which I don't need for much of anything right now, and try to influence the Queen of Egypt just to get her kind of on our, uh, on our good side. And then, since I married my family, my champion's family wife, and she died... Uh, my next step will be to try to arrange a foreign marriage with an Egyptian woman, and that'll bind our two kingdoms more closely together, which should 
further improve relations, and maybe I can keep her from attacking me while I grow at her expense. See where we're going with this? So we're we're gonna we're gonna use what diplomatic tools we have and try to forestall a war even while we're basically screwing Egypt over is, is the is the general shape of the plan here. Oh, well then look, I didn't even have to do it, because here's the thing. And that's awesome. We have she's cowardly, but so what? I mean a Sherbanov will makes up for that. He's got four courage. And but she has four wisdom, so watch what that's going to do to our research score. Bang. We just, just by signing on the dotted line, we doubled our research capability. And we're going to have stone, stone cutting next year so we can um, get rid of this deficit that we're running right now. Um, okay, we want to control six mines. Well, duh, that's going to be easy. We already got... We'll have two in just a minute. So, yeah, it's like a no-brainer. All right, so let's see what Egypt does, because it's going to take us a couple of turns to lock these two sites down. Um, we got a long way for the Slinger to travel to make that happen. But if we can pull this off, that's, that's going to be huge. Okay, so we unlocked the free stone. We don't want to take anything... That's going to unlock another free card. Fortunately, none of these do. So the question is, do we want to be able to build warriors? Or do we want to be able to... Now, now Syria has awesome shrines. And I love <clears throat> the synergy that these guys provide. But honestly, right now, we need more than guys with diapers and rocks. Okay? we we got to have some combat versatility. So... I'm going to choose iron working for that reason. And I'm going to abandon the barbarian site that I took and pray to God that, uh, see, there's a, I know that one of her scouts has been in this area. Shit, now I don't know if I want to do that. Hmm. This little, because I, I didn't harvest that, so this little icon tells me that her scouts have already been up here. Okay. In that case, in that case, I think the right answer is to, if we have to lose one of these three, I would rather lose this one. So I'm going to park on these, I'm going to stay parked on these two, and... If she gets to that one, she gets to that one. If not, we will get a settler up there or something to sit on that tile until we can. And because of my general, uh, this slinger can heal in neutral territory. So we're just going to heal up and get ready for the next fight. Now, one of the drawbacks to this, having to guard these sites, and from here, my, my scout can at least keep an eye on this, so we'll know if someone goes up to take it. But one of the drawbacks is we're not exploring, we're not busting fog, we're not finding ancient ruins or barbarian sites to attack. So this is, there's a cost to this, opportunity cost. We're, we're not, um, I mean, right now this is all we have. We're going to wind up with five sites unless we take steps to change that. But we either need to build settlers more quickly and occupy all these with our cities, or we need another scout, or we need we need something. But we we can't just leave the equation like it is, because this blows. So probably what I will do is once the worker finishes here, I will have uh, Melidu build train another scout for us. So we can send, so we can get eyes up again. Uh, early game is, is really all about two things. Uh, eyes up, fangs out. You gotta have your scouts working, and you gotta have a way to protect what you're, what you're building. That's it. I mean, that's, and you've got to, you got to do that while simultaneously growing, obviously. Because you, you can't just kick back and say, well, I got plenty of time. No, you don't. 
You do not have plenty of time. You have less time than you think, and you got to keep moving. You just gotta. Okay, so we can get some more research if we are willing to. This is a good event. We can get some more research if we are willing to fund false information campaign. And we aren't great at research even now. This is about where uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon starts. So we have sort of just gotten to decent research. Um, so anything we can do to uh, speed tech research along, let's do it. I mean, as long as it doesn't you know, bankrupt us or something. But yeah, so that's that's big. That was a big event. It's a very, five turns is a very long time to leave that scout part, though. I'm not real happy with that. Okay. Um, that's good news. So... Yeah, so we have some a pretty strong headwind. One because we're close, and two because she's a new leader, and we're we have a a better cognomen than she does. So we're we're more widely known and respected than she is, which pisses her off. And there's not shit we can do about that. So we just have to deal with it. Um. Okay, so let's check. Relations with the families aren't bad. Relations with the church aren't great, but we're going to... Ooh, okay, that's big. We can give ourselves another wisdom if we can find 300 gold. Well, 250. We don't have a lot of money, and we don't have a lot of resources. But, and we don't want to touch our food, because we need to be able to build another settler. So we need, what, 250? All right. Now we need 300. Aw, oh, shit. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Now it's getting kind of painful. But we improved our research a bit more. Okay. The way I approach the tech tree, we are almost certainly going to get uh, freedom before uh, Ashurbanopal dies. So let's take that as an ambition. That'll be an easy win. That's, we should be able to do both of those with relative ease. So that'll be two out of ten ambitions in our pocket. And I am abandoning, I'm not abandoning the site, I'm just busting what fog I can from here without giving it up. Same thing here. I just want to see what if anything of interest there might be here. Okay. No, 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 that's our last order. We can't do that. Okay. So we'll just stay on the site. Uh, and that's it. That's all we can do. Well, maybe not. No. I'm going to give... Oh yeah, we can heal again too. I'm going to give our, our uh, Slinger the Eagle Eye promotion. That's, I think, one of the best archery unit promotions in the game because normally the way it works is the farther you are from your target, the less damage you do. Eagle Eye negates that. I can do max damage from max range, which is awesome. So... Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever actually run slavery. Uh, I, the, the cost is just too high to me. I just can't, I just can't make a, I just can't make a logical case for it. I've never run into a game where I needed it that badly, you know? Uh, I'm getting my freebie card, the bonus stone, out of the queue so I can research Polis. Hopefully it comes up again next time. 
and I can get that free settler and that'll speed our development along. So we're still, we're freaking still, um, two turns, right? Three turns. Shazen. Three turns away. Okay. I was hoping for some fish or something cool up here, but no dice. Well, again, I'm not abandoning the site, so I'm just going to go out and back and then out and back and see what else we can uncover, because this is just too promising, especially if we can get both of these, even if this city site sucks, and it kind of looks like it does, that is still a big blow to Egypt if we can deny them all of this. That's, that's big. Okay, we already paid the tribute in iron. We're going to pay the tribute in food, even though that's going to really cost us. That's going to set us back. Okay, and I am going to... Now, I think I'm just going to go here and cut scrub, clear the land to do that, that mining triangle. That gave us a little bit more wood we're going to need to sell, to buy enough food to get the next settler going. Um, we're running our economy pretty close to the red line, and I don't like that, but I don't see that we had any choice. We The, the strategic decisions we made so far have been responsible for damn near tripling our research capabilities, and that had to take precedence, you know? So we're going to have to live with uh, kind of a craptastic economy for a while. But it was, I think, long term. And then, of course, in two years, we're going to have a big surplus of stone. And that'll give us some flexibility, too. So we won't have any problem funding our next settler because of that. Ooh. Uh, I don't like that our, that our leader is severely ill. Uh, could be a problem. Okay, I'm going to get the third mine down. I'd like to get both of these done before he dies. And if he dies because of this illness, that could really screw us up. Okay, so... I'm going to go out to... Oh, sh okay. I screwed that up. Well, we'll hope that Egypt doesn't have a scout lurking around that can scarf that from us. That was my fault. I don't have anything else I can really reach from there. So we're just going to end our... Oh, I should have healed the slinger again, because you can do that outside the borders. That, again, was a poor use of my remaining orders. Ah! Yay for amazing recoveries. Okay, unfortunately, Polis did not come back up this time, so I'm going to take whatever's the quickest to research so I can get a shot at Polis again. So, a divination's a good tag. I mean, that'll give us that'll give us some some good stuff. The shrines are pretty amazing. So, Okay, we're going to take this so we can get more money. That solves the money problem. Yay for no money problems. Uh, heal our scout up. And, yeah. Okay. I am... I am tempted to go ahead and try another another influence on the new uh, the new queen. Just to keep trying, I'd like to get our relations into positive territory. Uh, if we can. Uh, we're not moving the 
scout. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what that does. We only have one dimension of our economy in decent shape. Well, two. Money and iron. So we need food. And we need uh, stone. We'll, we'll, we got stone. We got stone covered. Um, so the question is, where do we want this uh, next city? Of the three sites we know about, I would judge this one to be the best, even though we don't have the tech to make it work yet with these uh, with these sheep and goats. Uh, this will be a a decent but not great site. That's the problem. All of our sites so far are decent but not great, and it, even though this is just a completely not a good site for the hunters. I'm going to make this a hunter city anyway because other sites will be and we'll get a bonus infusion of resources and the hunters just have such good synergy with Assyria. It doesn't really matter that this site doesn't have anything in particular that makes it an awesome hunter's city. Like I said, others will. They get uh, The hunters get the bonus resources when you found their capital. All hunters city get cities get two extra training points and when they make slingers their slingers come with slight with sniping which gives them a 20 percent bonus inside their territory so they are literally the best slingers in the game um, which is awesome so yeah I think what we'll do is we'll head up here and it's telling me this is the shortest path we'll head up here make this a hunter city and then move my scout up to this other site. I'm actually gonna come out here to see. Yes, okay, so it's still wide open. Good. So, yeah, we'll basically daisy chain our way up to that site. Start a new scout here. We're immediately gonna go to work on, uh, well, I'm not spending a hundred training for that, but because we've got enough stone stockpiled that we can live with the deficit for one more turn. So we'll immediately go to work on fixing the the stone deficit though. And here, uh, now is when we have to spend some money. And buy some food. So we can keep uh, the settler train going because we've got more sites than we can say grace over right now. What we really need to get firmly established is animal husbandry. Most, actually, all of our food tiles require. Ah, we are in positive territory at least for a little bit. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Now here's where I will spend uh, a little bit of money. Uh, no, I won't. Hmm. Okay. So let's yeah, let's do this. Let's force march to found this city right now, and then get as close as we can because this spearman may be on his way to sit on this this tile I think we can beat him there but we'll see in the meanwhile we are now nine turns away from our next settler which is really really bad okay this comes up, this is a good event too. It comes up once in a while. The choices give you festival too, which we'll get eventually anyway. Uh, gives you some civics, awesome. And, or gives you the consular tribunes. I like the consular tribunes. Costs a little bit of money, reduces unhappiness. That works for me.
Okay. I don't see that spearman, but I don't trust that he wasn't heading here. So we're just going to guard the site anyway. Now, I mean, at this point, Egypt is much stronger than we are. So if they were to attack us anyway, even though we have been working hard to uh, improve relations with them, we're done. We're, I mean, we're toast. Uh, the Assyrians are pretty good. The Assyrians are flat out amazing. But they can't hold off an enemy civ with one slinger, and that's what we got right now. So a as good as they are, they're not that good. Uh, I don't really like the monkey events. I recommend that if this is your first time playing the game, you try them out. See if they're to your liking. I'm just going to go with Tropical Fish. <laughs> okay. So we... Yeah. We're running a good surplus there. I am just going to build a farm adjacent to these two pastures to at least get us breaking even on food. That's not a great farm. It'll improve when we get pastures. Um, but it gets us it gets us to, to breaking even on food. And this will solve our stone problem. So I mean growing the economy is actually pretty simple. You keep your workers employed, you look at what you're running short on or running low on, and you build accordingly. I mean and then you try to stack uh, like tile improvements together adjacent so that you get uh, adjacency bonuses. That's really all there is to it, to growing the economy. Um, of course, in the early game, a lot of that is tech dependent. We don't have a lot of ways to improve our money right now because we don't have polis, which will give us hamlets. We do have this tile. Furs produces gold. And as soon as we get the food problem solved, that'll be next on the list. Um, but yeah, that's that's really that's really all it's about. Let's come out here and go back. We got one tile for that. It wasn't great, but one tile better than no tiles. Okay, we also want aristocracy. I don't want it until after I get Polis and the free settler card. So if I have to, and the reason we want the aristocracy is that gives us the ambassador. The ambassador gives you a way to get out of a war if you get attacked. So we kind of need that. But given the realities of the map, we need animal husbandry more. We can't really kick our growth into high gear without it. So, yeah, we almost got to research that next. <clears throat> oh, and you can only re uh, influence a leader once in their entire lives. So, since she is already influenced, that's it. That, that's that's my bag of tricks. I can't do that again. Oh, the other reason we need aristocracy for the diplomat is because we can conduct trade missions, which is your next big tool for maintaining good diplomatic relations. So we totally need aristocracy. Absolutely. And the sooner we get it, the safer we are, since we only have the one slinger right now. Uh, but... You know, we, we can't do everything at once. Let's see, can I... No, the option to tutor her is just not there. So, we just going to have to take the money for our unused orders, because right now, we have our hands full guarding sites that we want to deny Egypt. So, this opportunity cost is getting awfully high. And I'll be very glad when our scout is out so we can do something other than sit on uh, these sites and we can get back to exploring the map and finding... Okay, I, I like this event, but this basically gives you 
uh, a one in four chance of something really bad happening versus a 100% chance of improving my research. Yeah, I'm going to take that every time. And I got a new member of the court. Maybe he can tutor the kid if I had the money. Yes, well, I can get the money. So let's tutor the kid. Right? And this is this is another thing, too. Tutoring the kid, very important. Because this is the next generation, right? She's the heir. So we need to already be thinking about the next generation. We've already had a health scare with the Shurvanopal. We need to know that the kingdom is going to be in good hands next go around. So anything we can do to uh, get her, get, get our heir buffed stats wise that's awesome yeah let's do that so i don't know what stat will be improved by the tutoring but whatever it is is better than what she got right now uh so anytime we can afford it we'll take the opportunity to tutor her and get her buffed up now i i already know just given the ebb and flow of the game that you don't have any say over what your starting leader is. You pick the sieve and your leader is your leader. That's it. But by the time you reach the end of your first leader's lifespan, you have already met a couple of different sieves. The political situation is very tenuous and fluid. So for me, the way that I play the game, I would like my next ruler to be a diplomat because she can she if we make her a diplomat she can smooth over all the rough the bumps in the road keep everybody at peace while we're busy growing the economy and growing the army so that we can curb stomp them all later but until we get to the curb stomping point we need everybody to play nice diplomats do that so i'm already thinking Yes, my next leader. Now, after her, I want her kid probably to be a zealot because we're back to curb stomping mode then, and we can, yeah. So, you know, I want I want her kid to be someone with some ass kicking uh, capabilities. Uh, but second generation, I want a diplomat. Okay, so with that in mind, we will try to shape and mold her in that way. And we got 10 more culture, and as you can see, we have already, uh, yeah, so next year, we will, be, we will be up to developing culture, and we'll be able to build developing culture really wonders when we, well, when we get the tech for that, which we'll hopefully do. Okay, so stone, solved. Metal, solved. Wood, can't do a damn thing about it. Animal husbandry, we'll solve the food. So let's solve the money. We got a silver mine. So we don't have a silver mine. It is not in our borders. Well, damn. Okay, let's go work on stone some more. We got special tiles to improve. Let's do that. Uh, and we'll have our scout next year so we can actually do something other than sit around and guard city sites. Which is good. We need to do that. And my scout will probably harvest this silver on the way out just because it's right freaking there and it's the way we're going to go anyway. So, yeah, we'll do that. And I will, by the way, this, this video series is for the first 50 turns, but again, to keep the length of the video somewhat shortish, I will stop at turn 25 and then generate a new stream after lunch to do uh, part two of that. Um, we're going to build another, train another slinger. And this guy will just be a garrison. His whole job will be to guard the city forever, basically. I mean, you know, we might pull him out if we 
get desperate, but ideally he's just going to be a garrison. He will sit in the city and keep it safe forever and ever, and that'll be it. Um, all right, so we finally got uh, everybody else is busy doing their stuff, whatever. We're going to meet the Numidians and gain two legitimacy, which is awesome. Uh, we absolutely want to have a give a uh, give a gift of our own we'll get some good buffs out of that so we're gonna sell some stone buy some food sell some metal uh, so how much food do we need we need 40 we need 46 that's a very specific number okay Yeah. And now we need okay, so yes. Okay. Um cool. And that helps our research a little bit more. And we're actually on reasonably good terms with the Numidians now. I mean which basically means I don't want to rip our spleen out. Uh, we'll call that a win. Okay, we broke even on food. Let's go do some money stuff. Well, next year we'll go do money stuff. Good event. It just gives you a chance to mold and shape your character. Right now the only thing I care about is molding and shaping our research capability. So, we're going to do that. Uh, oh good, be cunning. That's awesome. Hell yes to the cunning. And hell yes to adopting religion as our state religion. And hell yes to hiring mercenary axemen. I don't care what it costs. That's awesome. Okay. So that, she's still showing is much stronger, but that was a huge increase in our military capabilities. Okay, well, I don't really want to fight, um... Numidians. I would rather have spearmen before we take on those very savage and capable horse troops. Uh, so let's see if we can find uh, a little bit easier of that. Normally, I would take this in a heartbeat. The the uh, the plus to the courage. That would be awesome. But we're broke. We need the money. And we just found, uh, by the way, our next McVictim. Yeah, so I think we're just gonna, yeah. I think we're just gonna mosey down that way. And look at all these juicy generals we got. Uh, look at this. Plus 25% into urban. He's awesome. I like this heal and neutral territory guy, but it defend, hurts our defense a little bit. It's kind of not bad, especially if we have to fight Numidians later, but he might be dead by the time we get to that point. Uh, gets XP, but main bonus is same unit adjacent, and we can't even train Axemen at this point. So, of these... Of these, I'm I'm kind of liking our uh, yeah this guy. Oh wait, but he's in charge of the slinger. But the slinger's doing guard duty, so who cares? Yeah, we're pulling him off the slinger and putting him there because he's not doing us any good guarding in the slinger right now. So uh, and our next city has to go up here, 
again this is this is a denial strategy where that's the, this is looks like it's the superior city site compared to this one don't care this is a denial strategy where we're blocking Egypt in and we can backfill this later so yeah we're gonna plonk our next city here and that frees up our scout who can continue scouting the north so and now we're just gonna do slinger another another garrison type unit uh, here and we have a thing an ambition for building um, six mines we've already got three of them so I think we're just going to set this guy to do another triangle of mines. We're going to do it like right here. Mine, mine, mine. And that will get us uh, our ambition. So we don't really need any more mines except it's an ambition. So what the hell. Uh, in three turns we'll have a settler out. Which is awesome. And... Ooh. Must we? Really? Must we? Well. Now you could make the argument she did that on purpose. <laughs> because she not really oh, there might there might be some Numidians over here next to her that we don't that we can't see. Um, or it could have been the AI knowing that, oh, this barbarian camp is vulnerable, so unless we keep uh, the Assyrians busy with other shit, they're just going to go down and take it, and we can't grow. You know, I'm not saying that's what it is, but it, it very well could have been. Um, and that does change the equation quite a lot, actually, because we're going to have to say yes to this, which means we're going to be in a fight with the Numidians. And we're not really ready to fight cavalry forces yet. But that did help our relations with uh, Egypt. So that's a good plus. This, not such a good plus. Uh, had I known that was going to happen, I would not have sent my, my axemen down this way. I would have sent him uh, through the hill country where it's safer. So he could get attacked this turn. Uh, in which case he's going to have to drive, he's going to be driven backwards because I won't be able to get to Melodou, which is going to leave it uh, exposed. And it's a while till it gets a slinger. It also means that when we get our settler out, I'm going to put him up here as planned, but then I'm going to move my scout down here to free up my slinger so I actually have the beginnings of an army to fight the Numidians with because one axeman not enough so that radically that one event just radically redrew the map for us uh, but this looks like a pretty good city site so if we can secure it and i think we can if we make smart use of this terrain here this is actually pretty good for us um yeah this will make a good city site to grow into so this is our first serious challenge and as luck would have it we are currently bigger than Egypt so I think our denial strategy and finding those empty city sites has paid dividends has has been working out for us so this is fair play I mean if we assume that she did that as a as a possible check to our own expansion you know try to get us into deep water or that we can't uh, easily handle fair play you know we've been screwing her over so fair play okay so our kid oh and we have enough money we can get her tutored again this uh, yeah we can we can buy some orders to do that um, so she's gonna get either discipline courage or charisma I'm gonna say let's uh, give her a point of charisma to go with that and then let's, let's see if we can Oh, now the tutoring to next year. Okay, next year. Well, then I won't buy any orders. So she's going to get a, a buff next year from the tutoring, and then we'll get to do it again because she's not 18 yet.
Duchess Yoda can be tutored as well. We don't have the money to do all this. We're just focused on the air right now. Okay. I would love labor force to build roads and connect our cities. That's awesome. But we need this, though. We need this for the free settler card unlock, so we're taking it. And for a bunch of other cool reasons. But yeah, we're totally taking that. Okay, and we got our settler coming out in two years. Awesome. We need that. And yeah, so right now we're fighting four Numidian cavalry with a single axeman. Those aren't great odds, so we're not doing it. We're going to come over here and wait. We're going to come over here and wait. Uh, I'll tell you what we will do, though. Let's see if we can promote this guy to, I don't know, maybe Horsebane, right? To give him a bonus versus Mounted. I know we can switch generals and get that, but I actually like this general. So let's do Horsebane. And now he's a decent Mounted Unit Attacker. That makes sense to me. Okay. And let's also... Um, what do we want to do? What we want to do is start building barracks, right? Because barracks give us training points, and training points gives us faster troops. So to do that, we need 60 stone. So let's do that. And can we train the kid? We can train the kid. Oh, there's an event here. Oh, let's see. Well, who is this guy and do we care? Okay, he's a member of this family. We're on good terms with this family. If we modify him, we lose two legitimacy and we don't have a lot of legitimacy. That's going to hurt. If we banish him, and I may take this back. I want to see what it does to our family relations. But I'm leaning toward let's banish this bastard, right? Okay, yeah, so it didn't hurt our relations there. Didn't hurt our relations with the church. I don't give a shit about that guy. We'll banish him. If he's going to mess with our stuff. Screw that. All right. Uh, oh, yes, camp, money. We need that. We're also running a slight deficit on food again. Um, but we now have the tools to fix that. So as soon as we get a worker freed up, we can uh, get some pasture action going. And yeah. So let's, we got to be very careful now that things are dangerous. We, uh, okay. Greece is our size. You've got to be careful about using your last order or your last point of movement to move in uncharted territory unless it is into a forest because you can get your shit jumped and then you lose your scout. So I, I knew moving this direction would take us to Greece and they're, unless they just randomly decide to attack us, that's not going to put our scout at risk. But now this barbarian site looks less attractive because it's right on the Greek doorstep, and I'm not sure we want to be that aggressive with Greece. Uh, we got away with it once. I'd rather not push our luck a second time. So maybe it's good that we're now focusing on the Numidians. So once again, the situation has changed. It's very fluid. Okay, so we need to try and influence this guy because he really, really does not like us because he's exiled. So that kind of came back to bite us in the ass. Uh, okay, well we can't influence him.
but he is a member of the Zoroastrian faith, and we can influence the leader of the Zoroastrian faith, and every point this number goes up, this number goes up corresponding amount, because he's Zoroastrian. So we can indirectly improve relations with them, and that works. So let's do that. This event is all ass backwards to me. If we choose this, I feel like the church should be upset, and they're really not. But this is actually going to help our relations with the church tremendously, which should more or less offset the hit we take. And it did, yeah. So we, they got even more pissed, and it didn't matter because they're Zoroastrian, because it just offset it. So, whatever. Right, right. You can't, you can't afford to just rigid, think rigidly. You can't afford to lock yourself in and say, okay, well, this is what we're doing. Yeah, but the game may have other, other plans for you. And, uh, you know, you, you have to be nimble enough to, to respond to that. And if you're not, I would love to do this, but we, we've been pushing the economy really hard. Don't know what else is going to happen. I'm just going to be happy with the one um, point of wisdom rather than the two. Okay. We gain legitimacy, so we lose legitimacy. It's basically a push, and we hopefully, yeah, get them back in good graces. So we didn't, we, we temporarily gained some legitimacy, then we lost what we gained, so whatever. We're back to square one. And that's better than a loss, so I'll take it. Um, okay, can we... Yeah, we've already tried. We're doing that right now. Okay. So, let's... Yeah, see, they're already all up in their business. All right, well... I wasn't too strongly attached to that site anyway. Um, now even less so. Good on the Greeks, you know. Good on the Greeks. But I think... Oh, can we... Can we do a... Can we... This, this is worth spending money for. Um, and yes, we can. And this will be the last chance we have. So... Let's absolutely tutor our daughter again and get her ready to take the reins of power when we pass from this earth which hopefully won't be for a very long time but you never know Oh, man, the place is swarming with Greeks. And wait. The Greeks are also at war with the Numidians, so we got to get, we got to get troops down there. Shit. Okay, well, I mean, good, that's drawing Numidians away from the camp. So that's a goodness. Let's see, what's the shortest path all the way the hell up here? Shortest path is to go this way, according to the AI's auto pathing thing. Uh, okay, so we're looking like three years to get up there. We're going to do another. Ooh, no, we're not. Shit. Ay, 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 uh. Okay. Food is at a premium. Okay, we're going to have to wait 
on uh, our next settler. That's it. Although we will possibly get the free card here. Food is, the market price of food is actually higher than everything else at the moment. So, well, I guess everybody has relatively food poor starts, which in some ways is good. That means that nobody's going to uh, run away with the game, or at least none of our neighbors are. That could be the case that the Romans or somebody's out there with a, you know, an abundance of food and we're just going to get, we're going to find them eventually and they're going to be like three times bigger than we are or something, which will suck. But yeah, at least our two near neighbors, we're expanding at about the same rate they are. So everybody's probably suffering from the same problem, although we can begin taking steps to fix ours. We got at least three, yeah, we got at least three pastures we can put into play quickly, uh, and that'll help, that'll help. But we're going to have to wait on the next settler. Unfortunate, but that the next thing is to build up the military, so we'll start a slinger there. That'll give garrisons in all of our cities, except the one that we found in a few turns. And, yeah, then next turn, we're going to send our scout back up here to check out the new Midian camp. These guys could be heading that way next, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, well, the guy that we just banished and released, uh, yeah, we'll marry him off to her kid. Mm. Well, damn. Okay, so we can't make her a diplomat, but of the two, I would say let's, uh, Let's make her a judge. Okay, well that's promising. I should have had the air study rhetoric. Okay, my fault. Okay. That's promising. Because the Greek force is pretty tore up and they're currently fighting other stuff. So if we can get down here and hit it hard, we may be able to secure that site quickly and relatively painlessly. We'll see. Or this guy might turn back and give us the what for. Don't know. But we're not going to grow without taking some chances, so that's just about as, as ideal as we could expect. Alright, and here, I, we really need the food. I'm not passing up on the food this time. Okay. Let's Yeah. All right. So that's going to start Well, that should put us back to 0. And that should give us a 10 surplus. So over the next decade 
we will grow to a slight surplus uh, in food. Actually, this should give us plus one because once this pasture finishes, the farm yield here will go up by one. So that should give us a plus one, and then a plus seven, and then a plus twelve, right? Yeah. So, not bad. Okay. Um, yeah, 50-50, intelligent or insane. No, we're just gonna, we're not gonna spend the money uh, for that right now. So, should I study tactics? Okay, so the first 25 years, uh, we've managed to get four, three cities on the ground. We've got a fourth in route. Um, have some important opportunities that have come our way, and it's going to fall to us in the next segment to capitalize on those opportunities so we can really firmly establish ourselves by the the end of the 50 turn mark which is it just i mean it's an arbitrary number but it's roughly the one quarter point in the game and i feel like it, 50 turns is a pretty good benchmark if you can uh we'll, we'll call that the end of the early game so if you can establish yourself pretty well by turn 50 then yeah, the rest of the game is going to be cake. And I think we're off to a good start. So I'm going to press pause here. we we'll grab some quick lunch. And then come back and we'll do the second 25 turns for this uh, video strategy guide I'm putting together. I'll see you guys in a bit.